Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks. This video is going to be my guide to pushing further into the Endless Archive. It won't be an instruction manual on how every little thing works in there. Honestly, after you run a couple of times, I think it's pretty straightforward how it works, and the discovery of what the archive offers is a big part of the fun starting out in there. But what I will do in this video is share some tips I've learned along the way, stuff that might not be easily discoverable without testing, with the goal of setting you up to push as far as you can into the archive. And a big thanks to Bethesda for sponsoring this video. So my first tip for the archive is to build a tanky. Enemies will start to hit extremely hard, and as you push higher for the ad waves, there will be more enemies spawning than in the previous rounds, with more elite enemies to deal with. So as a damage dealer, even having a tank with you, you will have to take some hits, and there are also boss mechanics that have damage that can't be avoided. You just have to outheal it, and building more tanky will make this stuff hit for a lot less, which in turn will make it easier to heal through. When you'll swap over to the more tanky setups, that's really up to you, but I'll give my suggestions for when I do it along the way. Just feel free to adjust if you think that you need some of these added in a little bit sooner or if you're comfortable holding off until a little bit later. So first off, as a damage dealer, in my opinion, Pale Order is a must. It is really, really strong here. Since you are limited to only two in your group, that heal never really loses much power. I don't think it's super necessary in a duo for the first few arcs, but typically by arc four or five, I'm swapping over to Pale Order because the incoming damage is just a bit too tedious to deal with without it. Another thing you'll want to do is add more max health. You can start your run with a more traditional setup or go ahead and have some tri-stat glyphs slotted. These don't really drop your damage too much and they do add in a lot of extra health for survival. Also prioritize food that has health bonuses on it. So Lava Foot and Ghastly, which can be popular in some areas of the game, I wouldn't really recommend these here. You'll also want to raise your health up higher as the run goes on. So one thing you can do is put more attribute points into health. I usually don't do this until later on in the archive. For me, arc seven or so seems a good spot for this, but you can pour it out, add some points into your health, and then port back in. Just don't take longer than five minutes if you are solo or the instance will reset. And the reason you can do this without losing too much damage is because once you have pushed later into the archive, you should have a good number of strong offensive visions that will be helping keep your damage high while you're still building more defensively. In just a little bit, I'll get into a few of my favorite visions you'll want to make sure to pick up so that you can do this. All right, so getting your health up higher is just one part of building more tanky. The next part is going to be your armor. You'll definitely want to get your resistances up for the archive. 33k resistances will put you at 50% mitigation, which is the cap there. Major and minor resolve are great ones to start with to get you up over that 20k armor mark. I pretty much just run these the whole run from the beginning. You could probably wait a little bit, but I just slot them from the get-go. I've been mostly running as a damage dealer on an arcanist so for me the rune guard of freedom and the crux weaver armor are the must run skills to get these two buffs depending on your class and composition though you may do things a little bit differently but having those buffs is really important then as the run goes on and things start to hit harder i will start taking other actions to continue to increase my resistances so let's go over a few more ways that you can do that first we have the resistance potions these add a ton of physical and spell resistance on my arcanist these will push me up close to that 30k resist mark. The big downside to these is that you no longer have your stamina and magicka return and those percent increase bonuses that you get from your normal potions. Luckily, there are some visions that will greatly increase our recovery, and there are also some that incentivize doing heavy attacks, which can help us sustain better as well. So I usually won't swap to these resistance potions until I know I have enough buffs to cover my sustain, because the last thing I want is to run out of stamina and not be able to block or roll certain mechanics. So this is more something I swap to once I know my sustain is in a really good spot. If you're kind of pushing up high and you are still struggling with sustain, maybe you haven't gotten enough recovery buffs from the archive yet, you can try swapping to a food with high recovery that still has health on it, but the resist potions are a really strong option if you can swap to them to take a lot of the edge off. Next, we have the Lady Mundus Stone. This is another nice option to swap to. You do lose a lot of crit chance from losing the Thief Mundus Stone, but again, there are offensive buffs that add in crit chance, so you might be sensing a theme here. As we gain more offensive power through the Archive's buffs, we can slowly change our build up to survive a little bit easier. It's definitely good to keep track of the buffs you're getting and play around them. And then finally for resistances, heavy armor can also help a lot. A reinforced heavy chest piece can go a long way, and I even ended up 
up swapping one of my sets to be a full on tank set. So I've seen pearlescent ward being run on the damage dealer. This still adds in a little damage on that five piece bonus, but you get a nice bit of extra mitigation from it being heavy armor. And it's especially nice if one of your team members goes down, that second part of the five piece bonus will kick in to allow for much easier recoveries. This also frees the tank up to not have to wear it and they can have a little bit more flexibility in their setups. Another nice thing about wearing one of these tank trial sets is that it has the minor Aegis on that three piece for the 5% damage taken reduction. And these percent bonuses can be really powerful. So this leads us into the last part of the tankiness topic, percent reduction. Protection in Aegis, both the majors and minors are really great to have. I actually tested out using Vrol and I could feel a huge difference when activating it with the heavy attack right before a hard hitting phase or triggering it right when a new set of adds were spawning in. So this gave both me and the tank major Aegis. And then the three piece bonus gives me minor. So just from having Vrol on, that's 15% damage reduction. Then if you factor in the major protection and minor protection, you can get major pretty easily from just slotting revealing flare, but there are some other sources of that as well. And then for minor protection, this also has a bunch of sources, but I got mine from the rune guard skill because it has a lot of other nice defensive buffs in it. So with all four of these together, you get 30% reduced damage taken and it is super noticeable. Then you can take this a step further with Black Rose Prison Dual Wield. This can be thrown in for another 6% damage taken reduction and it's still good damage too. It gives you 6% more damage. And then finally, if you want to take this even further, assuming you can sustain, Vampire Stage 3 will add in a ton of extra survivability with that undeath passive. You do increase the cost of your abilities by quite a bit and you'll have to watch out for bosses with flame damage, but undeath is really strong and it can definitely make a difference in living or dying in a lot of fights. So overall, you want to try to get as many of these percent reductions bunched together and then get the higher health and the higher resistances and those combined really make it so much easier to survive deep into the archive. All right, my next tip is know the enemy resistances. So Goavs and I have gone through and tested how much armor the enemies have in the archive. You can do this as well using the two-handed ultimate Berserker Rage. This gives you physical and spell resistance equal to that of the enemy that you hit with the ultimate. So just look at your armor levels before and then check them again after you use the ultimate. Doing this, we found that most enemies in the archive have 9,100 physical and spell resistance. So this is the same as you'd see from Overland, Delve, and Public Delve dungeon enemies and this does include the bosses in cycles one through four as well so pretty easy here to penetrate through that amount of armor the exception to this is the fifth cycle boss thoat replicanum this is the final boss in each arc and each version of her that you encounter will have 18,200 armor this is what you normally see for dungeon and trial enemies so not too tough to get through all that armor but you may have to build around doing so a little bit more than you would with the rest of the enemies in the archive all right, for the next two sections of this video, we'll talk about my favorite verses and visions. So the verses are the temporary buffs. They only last for the next stage. You'll grab one of these at the end of stages one and two, and then they'll be active for stages two and three. And then for the visions, you'll pick those up at the end of stage three when you kill a boss. And these are active throughout the remainder of your run in the archive. There are a lot of really good ones here, but I'll share a few of my favorites. These are the ones that I know will add a significant amount of power for your run. So we'll start with some offensive verses. The four on the left here are specific to skill types. You'll wanna make sure that you build around them, but they can be really powerful if you do, just really high percent damage done increases. And then the five on the right are just really strong offensive buffs. All five of these will add a significant amount of damage to your next stage. These do scale with your offensive stats as well. I was on a tank for these screenshots, so the numbers will get much higher than they currently are here. For defense and utility, if I don't have a solid offensive option to choose from, these are some of the top defensive and utility verses that I look for. Some of these are definitely better suited for the tank to grab, and some of these are definitely situational, but I found all of these to be really helpful at times. Then there are also three transformations that you can unlock. These require first completing a trio of three visions that correspond to the specific avatar, but once you do that transformation then gets added to the pool of possible 
couple verses that could pop up for you. As a damage dealer, the Iron Atronach is probably my favorite. Huge damage mitigation while you're transformed, and the amount of passive damage it puts out is actually insane. You drop this huge meteor that explodes. It deals damage when it blows up, but also while it's out, you have this big bubble around you that just passively deals damage to everything. It's just so good. The Ice Avatar is really good too. I like that one a lot. I think it's probably a little better on the tank than the DPS, but it's not nice either way. And I'd say the werewolf transformation is my least favorite because you lose your current skills. Some people might like this, but I found this one to be the least effective for the higher, more difficult arcs, whereas the other two were very strong all throughout. So these do all three have synergies built into them, and those synergies have a special secondary feature where they actually work as an auto resurrect as well. So if your partner goes down, if you can hang on long enough to hit your avatar synergy again, you will get the res off with without manually having to do so. These are all really fun. I think these are gonna be the highlight for a lot of people in the archive. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you only get one of these verses for stage two and one for stage three. However, if you do one of the bonus side rooms and successfully complete it, you will unlock an additional verse option. This means occasionally you will take two verses into stage two or three, and there are also mystery verses. So you can purchase these for 200 archival fortunes each, and the Marauders, which are the special bosses that start showing up once per arc, once you reach arc two, they also drop these. These can be used once per cycle, so I generally will save them for bosses. However, you can quick slot these as well, and since you don't normally have a verse in stage one, if you see a Marauder show up, you could quickly pop one of these to help increase your odds of killing him. So up to you if you'd rather use one there than on one of the bosses. So with your standard verse rewarded, a bonus side room, and one of the mystery verses, you could potentially take three verses into a single stage, which if you got lucky with the ones you get, that could be an insane amount of extra power. But that about covers the verses. Next, let's talk about the visions. For damage, focused efforts is the strongest option here. Before you get the account-wide unlock to increase your vision power, which we'll talk about a bit later in this video, this is only 200% increased damage to status effects. But once you have that bonus unlock, this jumps up to a 500% increase, which is absolutely insane. And this can stack if you get it more than once. So I've seen as high as 2,500% increased status effect damage with five stacks of this. This is one of the key visions that allows you to build really tanky and still get a ton of damage. Just make sure you are slotting skills that take advantage of this. So Elemental Susceptibility and Barbed Trap are two that every class has access to that will proc your burning and bleeding a lot. Then going to the charge trait on your front bar, so maybe double charge for dual wield or just a charge bow or staff if you are going that route to ensure that you're proccing status effects as often as possible. This is super important. I've even seen people running hard Heartland Conqueror with the charge trait as well. I think this could be a really nice option if you do have a few stacks of focused efforts. So yeah, this is the really big vision right now. This is the home run currently. So definitely don't pass this one up if it's presented to you. A couple of other really strong ones for passive damage, ferocious support and scorching support. These are part of the avatar sets. Really most all of the avatar visions are really good, but these two in particular can add in a lot of extra damage, especially if you've been unlucky and haven't gotten any focused efforts yet. And while they aren't as strong as focused efforts, they will still add in a noticeable DPS increase. So definitely recommend grabbing these if you see them pop up. Piercing Perfection is another really good one to grab. For most setups, you don't need a ton of stacks of this, but it does allow you to easily hit that pin cap on enemies without as much investment into that stat. Crystalline, Scorching, and Ferocious Strikes are all three really good too. Also part of the Avatar sets, they're just very large percent increases to certain damage types. Probably a little better for certain builds than others, but they all pair very well with focused efforts, that status effect damage increase. There are also some other good ones as well, not quite as impactful as the ones previously listed, but the crit chance, crit damage, and extra max resource these are all going to add up to quite a lot if you get a few stacks of them. For the defensive side of things, these are some of the ones that stood out to me the most. Effortless Aegis would be more of a tank thing, but the others are just all very nice amounts of extra protection to grab if one of the stronger offensive options isn't available to pick up. 
And then for the utility ones, there's a lot of really good ones here. Archival endurance and intelligence for the extra recoveries. As we discussed earlier, these can be huge to allow for a lot more build flexibility, which can lead to a lot more damage and tankiness. Attuned enchantments. This one is really nice, but I do want to point out that it currently does not work on the weapon damage enchantment or the weakening enchantment. If this is changed at some point, these are both going to be very strong options to interact with this vision, but there are still other really good uses for it and this can also allow for really nice sustain paired with some of the restoration glyphs extended favor i really like this one a lot too this makes your major and minor buffs and debuffs last way longer i have noticed it is a little inconsistent with gear set bonuses that provide major or minor buffs i tried roll out with this actually and it did not extend the major ages that roll provides so i'm hoping that gets adjusted at some point it'll make this one even better than it already is and then finally there is the supplemental thread this one seems to be really rare to pop up up, but it's nice to have a little more wiggle room to wipe one more time. So those were my favorite verses and visions, but in order to get the most out of those, you do need to get the account-wide unlocks from the merchant inside the archive. So let's take a second to run through those. Each of the permanent account upgrades are tied to spending a certain amount of archival fortunes and also completing a certain achievement. There are these six mini game activities within the archive that you can take a side portal to interact with. And each of these mini games has five stages of difficulty that you will need to complete. And upon doing so, you'll earn an achievement that will open up a corresponding upgrade to purchase. These are all really good. These first two here add an extra verse and vision choice each time those pop up. So you'll have three to pick from, one from each category instead of just two, which always leaves one of the categories out. This just ups the odds greatly that you'll get one of the more desirable options. Then these two here actually increase the power of the verses and visions. It seems like most of the increases are about 20 to 25%. However, there are some outliers here that increase by different amounts such as focused efforts jumping up from 200 to 500%. Then we have an unlock that increases our movement speed while inside the archive. This is really nice to just zoom around a little more quickly in there. And then finally, there is one to unlock an extra thread within the archive. So you'll start with four lives instead of three, or if you and your partner both have this unlocked, you'll start with five lives. So pretty awesome one to pick up if you are wanting to push deeper into the archive. So all of these added up do cost 100,000 fortunes, which may seem like a lot at first, but the rewards do increase the further you go into the archive, so it actually doesn't take quite as long as you might think. I was able to grab all of these after just three runs. Granted, that was still a pretty significant time investment as some of those lasted for quite a while, but I didn't spend on anything else until I had all of these unlocked. So ultimately do what you want, but that would be my route. I'd recommend you go with your fortunes when starting out in the Endless Archive. Thank you so much for watching. I will be doing another video where I share my Arcanist DPS setups. Probably will include that with a more standard DPS video. So keep an eye out for that one to come. But hopefully this has helped give you some tips to push a bit further into the Endless Archive. Big shout out to my current Patreon supporters and YouTube members. The contributions help a ton to keep the website and YouTube channel going. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Cougars Bay and the Cougar City Guild, the Order of War Guild, Cantankerous Cat, Shady, Iffy, Blakewin816, Mordecai1212, Suntime, Monaco, Fadridi, Florian, Phoenix, Nalandia, Unemployed, Cresseliana, Cha Cha, Technical KO, Cap, Danco77, and Pletbron. Thanks again and see you later. Uh, bye.